whenever we are doing anything any activity using those uh, google accounts or those paid phone accounts right they they have the access they have all the information whenever they need they can check my account what is the, whatever the state what is the state current status of my account they can right? check the entire countries if the entire country has that facility available so they have now that information available in their server only now they are not charging anything but sometimes they also sending us you know five dollars one dollar as a value of that using their services so here they are doing something for us and they are also paying us how how they they are paying what do we mean by a credit report right to credit report right what do we mean by the credit report whenever it comes to the credit report something that show the credit worthiness of the borrower whoever is going to apply for a loan right this report is going to tell us all about his character what is his credit when not is. someone is not making the payment on the time what do we mean by that how we are, we are going to think for him or for her that they are not keeping their promise they are promising that okay i'm going to make the payments on first of each month but then i missed in between even though i had enough money to pay i didn't care about that so that means even i have the money but i don't care paying it or making my promise right so that is what that is how we we make the character of other people right that is how we make make things or uh, we we could see the credit worthiness of other people you you will be in the doubt okay whether this person is telling truth or telling lies right. they they are saying okay yeah due to some you know there was some job uh, concern i lost my job so that is why i was feeling slightly you know uh, it was going slightly i was going through a slight tough time and because of that i, I was not able to make the payment uh, i missed a couple of payments but somehow i got the job and i then you know made all the payments on time after then or at the end now you have one more concern that is regarding his employment Okay, he lost the job. Means he started again. Maybe he is losing his job because of his, you know, he is not so responsible. And because of that, he or she is losing job, or they are not getting enough opportunities to stick with that job. So there are lot. This is how, and we can dig out or different information about his employment, about his credit worthiness, about his reserves, right, or about his assets. So it lead us to a different corners or different paths. where we need to head right so that is how the credit report is going to show us the worthiness or the character of the borrower are we good till this so when i come to you know what we were discussing we were discussing about how we are going to dig out different information on the basis of that the you know basis of that that information that is appearing in the credit report we will see you know how we, we what are the different information those are going to appear on credit report and how we can dig out different information from different things but mainly as of now in this session we are going to mainly focus on the credit report what we need to check and what are the information that is going to appear on the credit that, with that mindset we are going to do this credit report and uh, you know and that is the purpose of this session okay so what all information when before starting with the uh, with the credit report review we need to uh, you know uh, understand a couple of things that are like when i say we we need to see the credit worthiness there are lots and lots of criteria on the basis of those different criteria each credit report will be scored that we used to say fico score fico score okay the full form of this fico score is fair and isaac company fico score now this is what fico score fico score is a conclusive you know or 
conclusive information just by looking at this FICO score someone can make out what is the credit worthiness of this borrower scores could be like you know it could be like 400 to 800 right whereas 400 is the minimum and the maximum is the 800 I mean the I would say it's the low not the minimum 400 is going to be the low score it is like low oh, oh I'm sorry so 400 is going to be the low whereas 800 going to be the higher one that is the excellent okay if somebody has a 400 or even 450 or 500 that could be considered as a low compared to the 800 800 is the excellent score if someone just open the credit credit report or just get the you know small information or just a credit supplement or just get a credit score or wanted to check a credit score or credit information conclusive information then they will just see okay what is the score credit score they have they can oh it's it's a seven plus or seven sorry seven seven fifty near to eight hundred eight hundred is the going to be the excellent one so seven fifty is also good all very good right it's very good so they will easily get the get the finance that they have a very good character because on the basis of all the information on the behavior of paying back on that behavior only the score has been given to them but. Whereas somebody comes to 500, they might not get approved. No, sir, your score is not appropriate. According to the company, we only finance loans to the people who have at least 620 score or 600 or it could be 550, right? It could be anything that they wanted to, that, that bank, whoever going to finance, right? Or whoever the lender, whatever their guideline, okay, we will only be financing now for your customers, if they will be having a, at least minimum 580 school, less than 580, we won't be financing. So don't bring them to us for any finance. Ask them to pay it on cash or from their credit card. Right? So that is the FICO score rule. Now, who is going to give these, you know, like these FICO scores, right? So when it comes to FICO score, who is going to like, there are three credit bureaus who are those credit bureaus number one experience experience number two uh, transunion and number three number third is uh, equifax Okay, so these are the three credit agencies who are who are going who are giving these FICO school. Now, how they make the FICO school? And all all these are the separate separate you know say corporations, separate entities, separate businesses. What they do? What are their roles? Their role is like to collate all the credit information, all the debt information of the each person whoever having the SSN. We all know what is SSN, right? That is social security number that has been given to each of the, you know, uh, each of the US citizen or anyone who is a permanent resident alien or who is even non-permanent resident alien, right? People who goes to US with a per permit, right? They get a temporary or maybe a you know a SSN number and they can also they can also have a credit report, right? So anyone who is holding that valid SSN number uh, on the basis of where, wherever that, that SSN number or that person is going to you know uh, do any credit any credit related uh, uh, activity, right? Purchase or even inquiry, those will be captured by these three bureaus. And they are separate bureaus. They are not together. So on the basis of, I mean, someone is applying for a loan, obviously SSN will be used. Someone is going to take a finance, obviously SSN will be used. Everywhere borrower SSN is going to be used, right? Wherever borrower is going to 
even rent a home, right? If they are using to pay a credit report, they will get to know because wherever SSN is going to be used, everything will be reported to these these bureaus, right? So all 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 the activities, credit related activities, are being captured by these bureaus, right? And all the credit related information they are capturing and disclosing in the credit report. So they are creating their own credit report or own credit data. What are these bureaus? These are kind of a ser big server, right? Like we have Yahoo server, Google server, what electronic data, right? Every Everything is being captured. Now, let me give you an example, okay, to make it more clear, with more clear. clear. Let's say ki you have a bank account, right? Now, instead of using the net banking, right? You need to transfer money to my account. Okay. You need to pay to me. And instead of you are, you are not asking me my account number, what you are doing, you are going to, you know, you have a Google, uh, that Google pay in your phone. Now you have, what you did, you did the, you, you uh, have uh, integrated your Google account with your account number. Now, what is that activity? You have given given the Google Pay permission, right? Okay, this is my account. Now you can you know you can have access to that. Now Google has the access to your account. Now also I I also did the same thing. I also give, given I have given the permission to Google to use my access my account whenever it is required so now instead of going into my account i will i am going to the google and now google have the permission so i am just ordering google okay pay five hundred thousand dollars to the to someone to the trainee or trainee is going to give me okay you know all of you are going to send five thousand dollars to my account within a day right okay they send him so what you are going to do you are going to put my phone number right in my phone number then google is there your phone number, you have Google Pay, both are, you are going, you are just giving the permission or you are ordering to Google to fetch out all the information, right, or get 5000 from there and give it to Sudesh. So what actually we are doing? Now that our account is in the custody, not in the custody, but is in the access of Google, right? My, you, and there are a lot of people who are using the Google Pay or any other any other pay you know Paytm or there could be a lot of other right Payphone or or Airtel or everyone has the, those UPIs. What are those? Those are actually electronic servers, right? Being being and uh, you know handled by different companies. So those are electronic servers, and now they have all the information of our account. So obviously. They, if they have you know hundred thousand of bank accounts in their in their access now what they can do they can do anything with those accounts how they they are going to do let's say they are not whenever we are whenever we are doing anything any activity using those uh, Google accounts or those pay phone accounts right they they have the access they have all the information whenever they need they can check my account what is the, whatever the state what is the state current status of my account right and they can you they can check the entire countries if the entire country has that facility available so they have now that information available in their server only now they are not charging anything but sometimes they also sending us you know five dollars one dollar as in lieu of that using their services. So here they are doing something for us and they are also paying us. How how they, they are paying? Because now they have the entire, you know, that grid under their control. Now it, they can sell all the information to the different different things. Now what this, these are doing, they are also doing the same thing. Instead of that Google going to ask me to pay for the services that I am opting from them, they are not giving or they are giving me some some benefits instead of giving me uh, you know giving me uh, charging me how because they have all the access now they they may uh, you know instruct or they may request all the banks okay whenever this person is going to apply for a loan or whenever someone apply for a loan in your bank you do not need to ask them or you do not need to bother them for any information about their bank related ask me Subscribe. This is my application. You can subscribe. 
you you just need to take their permission that okay we they have applied for a loan now you need to tell that okay that person has given applied a loan with you just show me that document and i will give all the information of that account to you but you will be charged now that person who is going to, or that bank that entity that that business who is going to use that subscription they will be paying the subscription charges to them right in lieu of that they are getting all the information of our banks whenever they need it's not without without permission they cannot get into my account right and google will also be asking them to show the authority so whatever the loan application obviously i'm going to sign the loan application that i'm applying for a loan and whatever they need I got you know to, to before approving my loan, I will give give them the access. Now that that application or that permission could be used with the Google, and now Google will see okay that they are the lender, and I have given the permission to them to check. Now they will okay you do not need to ask them for both. You do not need to bother your borrowers, you know, and and go. You do not need to ask them for any information. Ask me, I have all the information. They have I have already given them all the information, right? they have um, access to my account so they can get lot of information if tomorrow i'm going to use maybe some hr companies are also using the same information or same kind of server where i used to work and now that that hr company is using that software which is prepared or that server is in the custody of google now google have both the information my employment my bank details now but if someone is going to give me a credit card what they need my employment whether i have the stable employment or not what is my income initially they were asking me i was taking it was taking me for to collect all the documents for 1 2 4 5 or sometimes a month right and after one month i was being approved now within seconds they have the access to the google all my accounts all my employment information is in the custody of or in has the access google had the access to my employment and to my bank accounts within a second that bank could get into the get that information within a second and within an hour i will be get being approved for the loan and maybe in the next two hours i will be getting that amount in my account does that make sense yes yes so that makes sense right that the work which was previously done in the months or in the, in the couple of months now that is that could be done within an hour because the group in the example that i shared with you where people can subscribe and they just need to pay nominal fee and they can get all that information whenever required so now google will be charging them not me but they google is paying me so that i keep with them i keep giving them the access so they are also giving me 5 dollar sometimes 1 dollar something right anyone it's not i'm just giving you because google is more famous so we can easily understand when i put the google example right but every server in the similar way these experienced transunion equifax are the servers they are also used to collect all the information that is you know spreading or or being you know, being happening around throughout the us inside the all the all the wherever the ssn is being used they will be notified okay this is what even the i give i had given you an example which was telling us that okay this was the this was the you know uh, person who went to this shop and there i mean how how will they uh, this the server will come to as soon as person is going to check my credit code they are going to use my ssn number my name as soon as that will be hit right they are going to check it from some website who who are the website who is capturing the do data these are the website so they will not they didn't need not to do anything we ourselves will be giving all the information to them by using the online method right so they have everything in their in their access as soon as it will be used they will get to know them that is how they they used to capture all the data month by month date by date or or day by day and Hour by hour or second by second, everything is being reported to them, right? So that is how all these three bureaus they have all the information. They have kept, they are capturing all the credit related information in their servers, and from them they they used to give it to you know anyone. Different websites they used to get subscription from them. They can you know access those those these bureaus and they can get a credit report and then they used to 
you know, give it to the people. I mean, you can subscribe, let's say, there could be a different small, small uh, websites like Credco, right? First, first credit or advantage. There are a long list of websites who all used to provide, I mean, they have subscribed these bureaus, one, two, three bureaus. And we can subscribe these to these agencies, small websites. So credit first, and I mean there are a long list of credit these agencies, small agencies who have access to these bureaus, these servers. And whenever we need a credit report, we can easily access to these and pay whatever amount need to be paid if we want to subscribe to these websites as a lender, as a business owner, we can subscribe and you know. We can pay on, on the, you know, whatever the credit report we are going to pull out. Now, so this is how the credit report could be pulled and this is how these bureaus or what are the roles or the, you know, these, these bureaus are doing. Now, whatever the information these are capturing, you know, Experian is capturing their own, own trans, TransUnion is capturing or collating all the data on their own server and Equifax is creating their or collating all the data into in their server, right? Now, whatever the data collected, mostly 99% is the same, but sometimes there could be a possibility that the information Experian and Equifax received, but somehow TransUnion didn't, didn't receive that information. That also happened. That's very normal, okay? On the basis of whatever the information they have received, each bureau, they have different criteria and according to that criteria, they used to they used to score each file, each data for each individual. So it could be like, let's say it's my credit report and Experian has given me a 760 score. Okay. And uh, TransUnion has given me maybe 724. And Equifax may have given me, you know, uh, maybe it could be six, 694. So that, that could that that is that is how it is going to happen. Sometimes very rare chances that two bureau has has you know given me given the similar like it also given say 724 it has 724. But I have in my you know all these 20 years I never saw that all the three bureaus has given 724 score. I never saw that credit report. Yes, but sometimes we I saw that two bureaus has given the same similar credit. It could be these two or it could be these two. But all three bureaus I never saw. I'm not stating that there could not be coincidentally it could be, but I didn't see. And I I do not know any of my colleague who ever told me, yes, they saw this kind of score that all the three bureaus have scored the five, you know, all together uh, with the one score. No, it mostly 99% going to be different, right? Somebody, but difference could be it's not always that it could be you know, almost 80, more than 80, but mostly it happens 760, then it could be 740, and then it could be 7, you know, 10. Yeah, 710, that could be the possibility, or it could be like 770, right? So there, there is a possibility, but it, it could not be one has given 760 and one has given 500. No, I hardly, again, I didn't see that, so I, I could not comment on that. This is how we, we saw the pattern. This is how they are going to give us, right? Right? This is how the FICO score works. And now, whenever we need to use, uh, since all three bureaus are giving the credit, uh, these credit uh, scores, but it, it depends on when, when we need, we, when we need to use all these three scores and when we can use only one. Now let's according to because we are in the real estate business, we are in the lending business. So we always need a tri merge credit report. Tri merge credit report. What do we mean by tri merge credit report? Tri merge credit report is which includes all these you know credit bureaus a report. I mean if the report which should be which should have the data reported from the Experian TransUnion. And Equifax. How that could be done? It's very easy. When what I the different agency or website I show you, right? You know, just before that there are Credco, there are TransUnion, there are different different type of websites we can subscribe. Right? There we just need to select the Trimerge credit report and what that 
that the track is going to do for us that will club all the you know merge that is going to retrieve information from all three bureaus and then it is going to merge all that code so whatever the duplicacy like you know i have a loan that is i have a credit credit card with the with an hdfc bank with hdfc bank now that will be reported by experian transilien and equifax so generally if i am going to pull credit report separately from all three i will that hdfc credit card is going to appear in all three statement but when i go for tri merge in that case that tri merge you know tri merge uh, that that credit report is will be merged together so that hdfc account is only going or credit card is only going to appear in one line and in the next to them whoever is reporting that data those uh, bureaus name will be written tri merge and then equifax and equifax uh, and transunion all three are reporting the same or if maybe there is a possibility equifax doesn't have that information as of now so there could be written experian or transunion that also possible sometimes but mostly what i am trying to say what when i say tri merge it means from all three bureaus report will be fetched by those agencies and then it will be merged all the duplicacy will be removed and only the one account per per uh, card or per i mean all from all these three uh, only the uh, one account will be considered in that report so that will be merged together that is what we used to say now because it's a trimer so obviously all three bureaus credit report credit credit uh, you know these credit scores are going to appear and those are going to uh, you know separate going to appear separately so th these will be you know uh, reported like okay experience set 760 transunion 740 equifax 770 but for my purpose if my lender is saying we will be only lending to those borrowers who will have at least 750 fico score so now in this case it is 760 740 770 now what need to be done here 750 Whether I'm in, because there is one that is showing the 740, whereas two are showing 760 and 770. Now what needs to be done? How to make out whether we are this borrower qualified for the loan or not with the 760? So what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it. Is you now I'm always going to take a middle score. How that need to be make out? What is the middle score? The higher one. The higher one is the. 770 and the lower one is the 740 that is the lower so what is the middle 760 right 760 so i am always i can always use the 760 means the middle score so what was the my condition 750 was the minimum fico score required now i have 760 as a fico score so i am good to go that is how we are going to consider loans in the we are going to consider these fico scores for our file whenever we are going to use or we are going to review the going to do underwriting pre underwriting whatever right so this is how and this is how you know different scores or different sometimes you know uh, the small business they do not need all the tri tri merge credit report so they can just apply for one okay we just need one bureau from equifax or they might rely trust in they might more they might have the belief that experience has more accurate data so whatever according to they can also use the single bureau credit report that is called single bureau credit report any of one bureau they can just you know uh download the credit report from one bureau and then one bureau credit report will have all the credit data that is also now that is slightly less expensive than when we go for the tri merge credit report okay great is it fico score and all three bureaus are clear to everyone yes sir yes sir great great good Now let's come to the credit report review part. What need to be reviewed in the credit report? So when it comes to the credit report, we will go, we will list down those only specific 
uh, information that we always need to check in all credit reports. So first of all, the credit report date, right? Credit report date. We need to see the expiry date should not be more than 120 days old. 120 days old. Okay. Should not be more than 120 days old at the time of closing. Whenever loan will be closed, will be closing. It should not be more than 120 days old from the, from the closing date. Okay. Number two, it also mostly you will see credit report date. Credit submission date. Now, again, like 1003, we said when it comes to credit report, it is not uniform. Nowhere we are going to see uniform credit report. No. So that means it is not uniform. The format you know, depends on the bureau, uh, on the credit agency, not the bureau. The credit agency which are providing us that credit report. Right. So, Credico may have a different format, whereas Advantage may have a different, right? Different uh, first first credit could have a different credit uh, format. They have. I I never saw um, you know two credit agencies. They have a similar type of you know uh, format, and they keep changing. They keep updating that also. So. So someone might say credit report date, some might say only date, some might say submission date, some might say order date. Some might say submission and order date. You order the credit report on such date and submit it was submitted on such date. Or some sometimes you will also see received date. Credit received date. Received date. Okay. So these are the different pattern or different information about the date. The purpose is same to see the expiry date. Oh, sorry. Credit report date, effective date, you can see. Number two. What is number two? Credit reference number. Now, Credit reference number is very important, you know, why? Because what happens whenever we are going to pull the credit report, it, we will be charged for, for some amount. It could be $20, it could be $22, it could be 16, 17, 18, anything, 19, 20, right? That is the most of the, the credit report I saw. Uh, they have this price for, for, for this cost for each credit report. So each, if we are going to pull the credit, new credit report each time, each time we will be charged with the $20. But if we have to, you know, credit report reference number, if we have to re-pull it. So instead of pulling credit report, new credit report, we can re-pull our own credit report that we initially pulled the first time. So there is a reference number, okay, okay, this is your reference number, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, T, 6, 9, 1. It could be the reference number. So with this reference number, I can pull again from the same bureau or same agency, the same credit report. It is not going to affect anything because when I say the credit inquiry, right, whenever borrower is going to inquire, right, so someone is going to pull their credit report or going to see their credit report from those bureaus. So that information will be noted down there. And number of inquiries are going to make effect on their credit score as well, FICO score as well. So, but if we have a credit reference number that will be given to us at the first time when we pull their credit report. Next time, if we need to use, we need to, you know, um, pull out the credit report, re-pull the credit report. Instead of pulling a new credit report, we can just use this reference number and re-pull the credit report. We will not be charged as well as there won't be any new inquiry that will be marked against the borrower or there won't be having any negative impact of, from because of, on the FICO score because of that, because we are re-pulling. We don't want to use, we misplay the credit report but somehow we have the reference number and we are re-pulling it. The second thing, whenever we are going to do the pre 
qualification evaluation in the LP or DU, we do not need to give them or that that those uh, you know we do not need to provide DU or LP the credit report data because DU and LP both are the AUS automated underwriting systems. What are those? Those are actually websites. So website with the, these bureaus have been integrated. So instead of you know we are uploading our credit report that we pulled from the bureau, we will we will just be submitting supplying this reference number and those AUS they are going to use this reference number and they will they can fetch out all the data directly from the from, they can go into that that uh, server and they can you know evaluate all the data from there instead of you know we are supplying all the information about the credit report okay, these are these are all the expenses of the borrower no we do not need to do that it could be easily i mean those websites are are you know are, are integrated with those bureaus and since those are integrated so it's very easy that whenever we are submitting the data they can also fetch out the information from according to this by using this reference number they are going to use all the data you know all the reports from directly from those bureaus one by one and on the basis of that they are going to give us the rules. but now since they even they are going inside that server and fetching out the data since we have given them the reference number so they will only be using this reference number and the data the date when we pull this data after that if something has been updated your LP is not going to touch that they will only be using the data according to whatever the information that has been provided according to this reference number that is the one the second they can whenever they are accessing those bureaus they will not be charged because they are using that the same credit report data that we already pay for paid for right whenever we pull the credit report with this reference number we paid them then only we got the reference number now we are just re-pulling the information from with this reference number so du and lp whenever they will be they are integrated whenever they need to fetch out the information whenever they need to evaluate the data they will be using this reference number and they will also not be charged is that clear to everyone what is the significance of credit reference number yes.